Please welcome U.S. Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg. Hello, I'm Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, and I want to thank the American Association of People with Disabilities for inviting me to share a few words with you today, as well as for your tireless work to advance rights, equality, and opportunity for Americans with disabilities. 33 years ago, on March 12, 1990, a thousand activists from across the country descended on Washington, D.C. to protest their government's failure to pass the ADA. When they arrived at the National Mall, dozens of them cast aside their wheelchairs or crutches and began to crawl up the steps of the Capitol. One of them was an eight-year-old girl, the same age that I was at the time, who declared, I'll take all night if I have to. Four months later, the ADA was signed into law. And to this day, it remains one of the most important pieces of civil rights legislation in America. It expanded rights for one in four people and transformed every dimension of our lives, from school to work and certainly transportation. And it changed them for the better. So I can think of no better time than the anniversary of the ADA to redouble our efforts to ensure that people with disabilities can move freely, fairly, safely, and affordably through every part of our transportation systems and through every part of navigating their lives. Here at the Department of Transportation, that is exactly what we are working to support. Take the example of air travel. We have begun preliminary work toward a new rule that will allow passengers to stay in their personal wheelchairs when they fly. Later this year, we will announce another rule expanding training requirements for airline staff who assist passengers with disabilities. And today, we are pleased to officially announce a rule that will increase the size and accessibility of airplane bathrooms to better accommodate wheelchairs, because travel can be stressful enough without having to worry about whether you'll be able to access an onboard restroom. We have also awarded billions of dollars through President Biden's infrastructure law to modernize airport terminals, including adding wheelchair ramps, accessible restrooms, and more. And because civil rights are only meaningful when they are enforced, we're calling on Congress to pass legislation that will ensure that passengers with disabilities can pursue legal action against airlines that violate their rights. Beyond aviation, we're working with automakers to ensure that the vehicles of the future, like self-driving cars, are built with disabled users in mind. And last December, we awarded nearly $700 million dollars through funding in the infrastructure law to retrofit old rail and subway stations, adding elevators, ramps, and other improvements to make them more accessible. All of these efforts are rooted in countless hours of conversation and input with disability advocates. As we saw so powerfully with that capital crawl three decades ago, creating an accessible country requires that our policies reflect the voices of this community. And as we have seen in the years since then, improving accessibility benefits everyone in our country. When we empower millions of Americans to live their lives to the fullest potential, the entire country is better off. Judy Human, a giant of the disability rights movement who passed away earlier this year, once said, change never happens at the pace we think it should. It happens over years of people joining together, strategizing, sharing, and pulling all the levers they possibly can and then suddenly, seemingly out of the blue, something will tip. So thank you all once more for all that you have done to bring about that change. And thanks in advance for all that you will achieve in the months and the years to come. We're proud to be working with you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this event.